Okay, lads, here we're going to do the 2015 higher level question B1. It's a very physically big exercise, so you need to actually watch how you do it. I'm going to send you the um, the dimensions. You can look look it up. I'll send you the paper anyway, and I'll send you the solutions. But here you have this. So you can start off by setting up the basic shape and working with the dimensions. We're working on the elevation. We're putting in the base here, <coughs> and you can start having in the steps and the central portion. So it's like a trophy. You can you draw your line in like that and like that. Note that all the coloured lines, as always, are light, and I just heavy in these, and that is the elevation. You have all the dimensions in the exercise that I've sent you. So let's work on the plan now. Plan is directly below the elevation. We put in all our given dimensions, our curves, like that. And put in those, you have your diameters of those ones. Bringing down from the elevation, all the widths. Note that all the red lines as normal are light and this is heavy and I'll draw in those and finally here's our steps and to get this we need to come 90 mils from here to get that apex point or that point for our curve draw our curve it's not a semicircle it's just a curve so it passes through that point and that point so any uh, arc from that point or that point will give us that. So, end view. We can project over, project up. We can come off at 45 degrees up this way or do it the way is indicated in this power point. And we'll bring all our widths over. Remember, the heights for the end view are the same as the elevation, so we're going to bring it across. And we have that. And bring these lines up here. And we're nearly there. Now, the problem for the end view is this. This is going to appear as an ellipse, or elliptical shape anyway. So I wouldn't get too het up over that. You can see there's a lot of construction lines. So I'm bringing the widths up from the plan to here, bringing them across to the elevation and elevation. And I'm drawing in those points like that, and that give me that one. True shape can be found by rotating the abat our rebatment, so you see that surface S has to be rotated, so we can just bring that around, compass needle here, rotate that around, or rebat it around, like that, and like that, bring it up to the elevation, and bring it out, and it'll give you that shape, that's a true shape. Wouldn't get too upset over that. The marks allowed for that are fairly small. Okay. Okay, lads, we're going to take a look at 2015 higher level uh, question part B4. And that's a development question. So let's draw the given plan and the elevation to the dimensions given. There you have it. Two circles at the bottom. Your heights alternatively as dictated on the exam, and there you have that. Come over and draw the end view. Now, you, you know you can actually come over here at 45 degrees by drawing a straight line down, or doing it this way, 45 degrees, bringing them over, bringing them up. What that does, it transfers all these widths up to the elevation. Okay, so there's that point there, there's that point there. And I'll just continue it up, and there's the elevation. Now, we know looking in here, that's truncated, that's cut cylinder. So we know we have to find uh, what that looks like. So we're going to need a few more points. It's going to be kind of elliptical shape, really. So we know that point here would be straight up here. But these two, so I've got these two points. Brought them down here, we'll see what that looks like. When I bring them up to elevation, you can see that. Now, let's divide that into 30, 60, 90, 120, 150. 
And let's bring those points up. Now you can see that point is already brought up to line with that, which is handy. And bring these ones up to the elevation, the green lines here on that. Bring them across to the end view, like that, and like that. Now where am I getting those widths from? Well, there's the height, there's the width, and that gives me that one. Here's the height here brought across, because they brought that up here, just to just tra track it up here, over here, gives us a height. Let's track the width, over here, up there, gives us that point. So now we have that, and finally, our last point is center, and that gives us that. Now, it's the elevation plan and, and elevation. What's the next part? Well, of course, the next part is the development. So we can shade it in and make it look nice like that. Okay. Generators can be used to complete the development of the curved surface. So, divide a circle in the plan, plan into segments, just locate the generator of the surface of semi cylinder. Exactly like our truncated cylinder. Remember, that's a cylinder. That's, that's a cylinder that has been cut. So divided to 12, we've done this so many times before. Bring these points up to the elevation. So there is, make that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Whatever number system you want. And you can project the heights over from that. So, use a compass to measure distance between the generators and the base and apply the distance to the development. So, what do I mean by that? Take that dimension and add it up here 12 times. We know each one of those is the same. The distance between the generations. So I mark them off here. So take that dimension and mark it off. Start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Now remember where I get those from? I got them from the plan. Right? That distance from there to there. That's good. That indicates. The height of each generator projects from the elevation. So, if I just take that one, what height is that? It's over here. What height is this one? It's the same height as that. These two heights are going to be the same, as will that, and so on. So let's just bring them over. Like that. All over like that. See the heights are brought over from the elevation. Project it over. Now remember, let's play this over and over again. So did you get it right? It's just a matter of following the points. Pause it when you need to pause it. That'll give us that situation. We get their base. And I have now can mark these off if I want to get an incremental proportion of it. So see that little piece here. Now, I wouldn't really get too het up over that lens, so don't worry about that. It's just really fine tuning it, taking that little length, which isn't bang on, and bringing it up. Believe me, you will not use marks. So there is the development of that. Okay, now, what about the lower part? This is a truncated cone. We did this last week, lads, if you look at last week's exercise. So take that length from there to there and scribe an arc. Okay? Take that length from there to there and scribe another arc. Now we know the development of a cone is fan shaped, so we can start anywhere. That doesn't matter where that line is, make it vertical or horizontal. And I mark it off. Take one of those dimensions. Right, maybe a little bit off screen at the moment, so you'll see it when it comes on screen again. I mark those one, two, three. Remember, those, that dimension on our compass is that dimension, right there, whichever one you want. It's all the same. Again, there's 12 divisions here, so I'm going to keep going here. 12, reminding you of where we got those again. That is the distance on our compass. You mark it off 12 times. Note that all of these lines are colored, so that means they're light lines. And we're nearly getting to the point now where we have our shape. Okay. Now bear in mind, it might look slightly different when you do it. If you start that line vertically and mark it off that way, it's going to look a little bit different. But it's more or less the same. And that's our development there. 
So that's heavy then that, that's that dimension there, heavy then. And remember to keep dotted lines for your um, development. Okay lads, I'm going to, will we take a look at question five possibly? Um, no I won't at this point. I'll come. Okay lads, question five is our transformation geometry. We have translations, axial symmetry, central symmetry and rotation. So we're going to take that. So we'll start by drawing the grid and drawing the little man shape that's there <coughs> using the points of the grid. Remember we've got to lay it out first. There's our point P. All of these are P1, P2, P3 and P4. So we need to locate those. Draw the, the image of the given logo under the following transformations from P to P1 is an axial symmetry. Locate the axis of symmetry. Remember, an axis of symmetry is a mirror, a mirror image. So let's work with that. So where's the mirror? If that's the point, and that's the image, well, the mirror has to be halfway. And we know the other condition is supposed to be perpendicular. Okay, in other words, 90 degrees. So we can draw, bisect that line, and draw that perpendicular bisector. Now, of course, you can use your set square as well. Just measure halfway and use your yeah, right angle in your set square. So, if I bring that down here, P1 is the image of P under an axis symmetry. So, the distance from P to the mirror and the distance from the mirror to P1 is the same. So, likewise, that point from there to there is the same. So, it will be the same down here. So, mark that off down here. So, what I do is, you draw the grid again, that's don't try to draw the object, draw the grid again. So there's point 3 on the grid. Take that distance, mark it off here, like that. That distance and that distance are the same. That distance and that one are the same. And I draw my grid like that. So I'm just going to quickly put it in here and you draw that. So it's kind of inside out. Right, anyway, from point P1 to P2 is by a central symmetry. That's the image in a point. So P2 is the image of P1 under central symmetry. So P1 passed through a point here and came out P2. So we need to find a point of symmetry. So join P1 to P2 and find the halfway point. You can bisect it again using that line and that gives me my point here. Now P1 passed through that point to get to P2. So this line passes through there and take that distance from there to there. Right, remember the shape has to be the same. That distance passes through our point of symmetry, comes out here, and we draw the third point of the grid, and finally the fourth point of the grid there, and that gives me that one. So I can heavy that in, or if you want, and draw in the object. Now it turns it upside down and back to front. And that's our central symmetry. Okay? Next thing is a translation. Translation is magnitude and direction. You're just moving it up. So P1 goes to P3. Okay? So all of those points goes, take that distance P1 to P3 and we'll mark it up. That distance up here. So it's the distance from P2 to P3 is marked up here in the same angle. Okay? So you take that angle and mark it up the same distance. And again, we're drawing the grid. Draw the grid here. And there goes our little shape again. Now, if you've that much done, I'm quite happy with that. You can leave it up there till maybe we get back. But I'm just going to do the rotation because I've a minute to do it. So join the lines P3 to P4. We're going to rotate. We're looking for a point of rotation. Okay? We're looking for a point of rotation. So it's rotating 120 degrees about a point. So join P3 to P4. 180 minus 120, because it's got to be an isosceles triangle, is 60. 60 divided by 2 is 30. So if I come off 30 degrees there and 30 degrees there, I give my point of symmetry. I have to rush up on here. And I'll just quickly bring in this, because we haven't done this one, so I'm just going to go quickly so you see it here. You can slow it down if you want. I'm going to actually show you a better method of doing this anyway, later on. There's our rotation, and there's our final object. Okay, lads, thank you very much.